in this final flowchart on conservation biology. And unfortunately, and pretty sadly speaking, uh, in this final flowchart on biology 115 as a whole, we're going to be ending on the final look at effects of human actions, uh, Roman numeral 3. So let's conclude our entire Bio 115 study with one last flowchart. Effects of human actions 3. Now, the two main things we're going to focus on are greenhouse gases and the atmospheric ozone layer. So first, we'll talk about the idea of greenhouse gases. So what are they and how do they show themselves up in terms of our title? Greenhouse gases are a result of increasing CO2. They result in increasing CO2, carbon dioxide, in our atmosphere because of burning, everybody knows this, uh, of fossil fuels, because of burning of fossil fuels, and also deforestation. This is something we've mentioned before, but we're just going to reiterate just to make sure we're grounding our knowledge on something pretty concrete. And again, why deforestation? Why does that increase CO2? Why greenhouses, Greenhouse gases increase CO2 because of the burning of fossil fuels, and also deforestation. But why deforestation specifically? Well, that's because there are going to be no trees or plants, or whatever you want to say, to absorb that CO2 that we release into the air, that we release into the air as a byproduct of our fossil fuel burning. Trees, plants want CO2, right? And if we deforest them, if we remove them, if we log them, there are less trees to absor absorb the CO2 that we put into the environment. Now, another thing to understand about greenhouse gases is the greenhouse effect. So let's talk about this. The greenhouse effect is the following. Gases in the atmosphere that are naturally occurring are just there, let's say. There are gases in the atmosphere, and those gases include things like CO2, things like CH4, methane, things like water vapor as well. These are all gases within our respective atmosphere, ATM for atmosphere. What's going to happen is these gases normally are supposed to trap plus absorb something very, very dangerous to us, which is infrared radiation. Infrared radiation. And so long as they do this, we should be happy. We should be healthy. We should be okay. But what happens is, in the greenhouse effect, we are going to have a re-reflection. These greenhouse gases will re-reflect back to Earth. That does not sound good. Back on Earth. And if we increase these greenhouse gases so much so, we'll increase the re-reflection and thus create what we would call a greenhouse effect. So that re-reflection is the direct representation of a greenhouse effect. Now, in terms of greenhouse gases, not all is lost because there are certain climate change uh, changes that we can do, or solutions, better word, climate change solutions that are quite possible and quite prevalent today. This would involve things like efficient energy usage. We see this all the time with our efficient, very efficient light bulbs now. Uh, efficient energy usage is a big thing. Decreasing deforestation, though uh, important, is not happening as at great of a rate as we would hope, this decrease of deforestation, but we're still trying our best to emphasize this. And also, this is something that we see a lot today, things like electric cars replace fossil fuels, you know, the burning of gasoline or the formation of gasoline, replace fossil fuels with alternative energy, things like electric. And that's something we see pretty widespread now as a big movement, which is really, really good because we have to stop this re-reflection. That is not good. You do not want infrared radiation re-reflecting back on the earth. That's a bad thing. So, Last thing to understand about the effects, uh, greenhouse gases are covered. There are also this idea of the depletion of our atmospheric ozone layer. So depletion of atmospheric ozone layer. So in our atmosphere, we have this layer of ozone. 
okay? It's called O3, chemically speaking, and this is a layer in our stratosphere. Layer in the Earth's stratosphere. So ozone, O3, it's about 17, uh, between 17 and 25 kilometers uh, from the surface of the Earth, let's say from land. So it's pretty high up there. And also it has a critical, critical role of not this idea of infrared radiation, but something that's also very dangerous. It protects us from something, a different type of radiation called the UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation, which comes from the sun's rays as a natural process, a natural result of sun uh, shining on the earth. So we have this nice ozone layer. It's a very important part of our life on earth. Now we can disrupt this ozone layer by being quite uh, uh, wrong in our human actions by utilizing things like CFCs, which are chlorofluorocarbons. No good. These are really, really bad. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, more commonly referred to. These are oftentimes found in uh, the refrigeration and manufacturing processes that we have across Earth. And it's not so much so anymore. Uh, we, but the problem is when we have CFCs and they're released into the environment, they make O3, it makes O3 turn into O2, and you might be thinking, oh, more oxygen for the rest of us, right? No, that's not good in this scenario because the big thing right now is to protect us from UV radiation. And when we turn O3 into O2 because of the CFCs, you can even write CFC on top of this arrow, this is going to be very, very bad in terms of our protection from radiation. So now what we expect to see because of this CFC is the thinning, that's the exact term, of our ozone, our O3 layer, because of this CFC releasal. Um, and this thinning of ozone layer will create or creates ozone hole. And this is something a lot of people have heard of before, a hole in the ozone layer. And if you have a hole in the ozone layer, this is, represents itself as a spot for increased UV radiation because it's a hole. There's, there's not a, this is a place in which we cannot pr be protected from the UV radiation. And thus, this is the idea of wearing sunscreen, right, to protect us from UV radiation. If we have increased UV radiation, we get very detrimental effects, very direct DNA damage. The moment you have UV radiation on your skin, you get direct DNA damage. This often uh, leads to uh, very, very serious melanomas and cancers of the skin, and also crops are going to be very directly affected. They do not like this UV radiation just as much as we don't. So not all hope is lost because, of course, just like we have climate change solutions here, we do have a bit of a solution here, uh, not a solution, but uh, a good scenario in which most of our CFC usage, let's say, CFCs, um, let's say, are almost zero in terms of being released into the atmosphere. Uh, but the problem is, but our problem is, what's there will stay for about 50 years what's already there will stay for about 50 years or so. And we're trying to develop technologies to remove ourselves and rid ourselves of these CFCs. A lot of times aerosol containers you will say you will see they, they will say explicitly does not contain any CFCs because at a certain point, all that they contained were CFCs. And it was really, really bad. But we are certainly turning the tide in terms of our human actions that we're developing. So that concludes our discussion on conservation biology. And it also concludes uh, very happily the uh, study of biology 115 as a whole. I thank you for joining me on this great journey through this subject that I really hold, hold very, very dear to my heart. I hope that you, of course, I say this all the time, so I want to reiterate, I hope that you've learned a great amount of information, a great amount of knowledge has been gained, but of course, I hope you've gained a greater appreciation for this subject that I truly, truly love. Thank you for being a 
uh, noble and active biology user. And I hope to continue to provide the service, and I will continue to provide the service for Biology 116 in the very near future. Thank you.